Okay, Monday morning in the kingdom, and there's a slight breeze. You can tell by the flags. I just untangled them. All right. I know I'm going to be censored because it's chilly out here. So the me phone will censor me. It's like standing out here waiting to be hit by lightning. I don't know when it's going to happen or when, how, or why. It's like the wife. when she When is she going to say the word fine? And then it's a question for me to figure out what I did wrong. Yes. Okay, so this morning we woke up to minus 17. I have to stand under the yard light because it's dark out here. Okay, feels like, no, minus 17 Celsius, but feels like minus 23. I wish somebody would write this in English so I could read it. Okay, on the yo-yo scale, plus one Fahrenheit. Ooh, it's warm, but it uh, feels like minus nine. Ooh, big temperature drop. Okay, so today we're going to head into because it's supposed to warm up so we have the 39 chevy plugged in and we're gonna go put the chimney in for the staff's house yes we've been saying that for how many years yes this this we're gonna do yesterday we had to work on the twins because people around the world were asking questions so the best way to answer questions is to make a video that way they can replay it and replay it to learn or point out my mistakes yes my mistakes oh well I'm not perfect. Yes, if I was perfect, I would be living in the Playboy Mansion, living the good life. But instead, I'm at the end of the world, standing under a street light in the dark, with my glasses on like the Blues Brothers, freezing to death, holding a stick. All right, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, we canceled today going to town or into Whoville for the staff's chimney because one, it was snowing and two, it's supposed to, well, we were hoping to use the warm weather, but we also have heavy snowfall warnings coming or forecasted. So it's better to take the mini hoe into her house at, how would you say, use it once instead of take it in, put the chimney in, then go back and plow some snow or whatever. So the today's plans have grass drastically changed. Oh, these lips need some vodka. Okay, so now with the plans changed, we're going to do a video and documentation on the fuel systems on the TD6 and the TD9 cats. The fuel system is basically the same on both because IH kept everything interchangeable. Yes, not like the other companies. So, okay, so let's go over here. And this is really important now in the today's new world because trying to get filters is getting hard. These filters have become very expensive and it doesn't matter the brand name, okay? Plus, a lot of people do not understand the fuel systems of the IH cats. Okay, so the first thing we'll do right now, and also too with these videos, it's my memory. So let's recap. All right, you need three filters on these cats in the kingdom, okay? So let's recap here. So this morning we went on to Rock Auto, and I priced it out. So I'll include a picture of this sheet here, but also too I made lots of them so I can lose them. All right. Okay, so the price today on three three one four seven wix filter at rock auto is 25 27 canadian okay and that's the back filter which is down here which is this one right here but also too in march 2018 i paid 12 dollars and 47 cents for that filter here landed here everything in the kingdom prices is based on here okay what it costs to get it here all right so on the other one here three 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 one four eight wicks and it's the front one rock auto price 36 10 canadian that's this one here okay and i didn't mark down the price back in 2018 or 14 or whatever that's the older box so it uh no it could be the newer box i'm not sure Okay, we're using Wix filters because they have the best website catalogs for cross-referencing, measuring, everything. But if I was to message Sir Rodney or give him a call saying I need these filters, Sir Rodney will change it over to what he can get. He's a parts man, so he'll change it over and find it and send it to me. So then we get different colored filters, okay? All right, so over here, we have the prices here. And then to keep the fuel clean coming to these filters, We've installed the inline filters, okay? This is my trademark, and these are the diesel filters, okay? Diesel, not gas, not anything else. These are diesel. All right, so that filter is 33248, 
and it's right now at 1174 Canadian also so that's pretty pricey but that's worth cleaning the fuel before it gets to these filters here also too I don't know what IH was thinking but on Sesame Street 47 becomes before 48 but in the filters here 47 is the back one 48 is the front one so you got to be dyslexic to understand the filters and remember how they go in what's up everyone sir rodney of west trans i showed you the inside of the store last time now that's only a quarter here's the upstairs we are now on the second floor of parts and as you can see we have one two three and four five rows of baldwin filters ready to go so if you need a filter we have it you can give me any number i can cross it over to our baldwin numbers and we can send them out for you joey gave me a list earlier today for had them in stock so five rows of baldwin filters pretty good and that's it for now we'll talk to you later hi mom okay we're making short little videos here in case the me phone is censoring me because i'm talking money yes money all right so this is the quick list here so we came up to 73 dollars and 11 cents canadian this is in the rock auto shopping cart okay rock auto lets us put everything into canadian funds and then the freight and duty for it to be shipped here and we can only get it by united states postal service okay fedex and ups just soak me and then they'll turn around and send me a bill three months later saying i still owe them more and they're gonna hurt my credit rating well hey buddies i live at the end of the world i have no credit rating okay so then we come to what we whack on our credit card we have the pay as you go credit card because being self-employed as a YouTube influencer and a published author, I do not have credit. So getting a credit card is next to nothing. So we have these pay-as-you-go, which I like. Because that way, nobody can keep whacking the card because there's no money on it. So I like that. So the total whack on the credit card would be $140.26 Canadian. All right. And then you got to add the additional credit card fees, you know, which is about average. So say $15 because that's what I budget. So my total cost to get three filters to the end of the world is $155.26. Yes. So that's the reality of living at the end of the world. You know, it's not like we can drive by Napa on the way home, grab the filters if they have them in stock and then stop at the beer store and, you know, pick up a case and then go work on the cat. All right. So that's the joys of living at the end of the world. So that's why we have to make sure we get the correct parts ordered and arriving here at the end of the world okay also too a lot of people do not understand the ih fuel systems that they had so he copied this out of the original parts manual so you can see the filters they were kind of a well, i would just say wool rolled or whatever rope rolled and everything like that that was their style uh, caterpillar uses that in their filters on the d6 so you have these plates here okay the one on the top one of the, oh, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then you got your rubbers and all that kind of stuff. So those are rare, okay? Finding those, because most people take it apart. They'll end up with these filters with the knob or whatever, the insertion thingy on the bottom, okay? And these ones don't have any. So what they do is somebody's tossed these away and tossed the spring and tossed the cap away. All right, there's the top piece. So then they just stick these filters in so they're just sitting on top so there's nothing holding it down to become a filter so the fuel will flow everywhere but through it to be clean so you're only actually working off the one filter i think of all the 16 or 12 or 14 ih cats in the kingdom i think we only got two with the correct fuel system and stuff like that okay so that's a learning curve and that's why we chose these filters over here okay now on to the fuel filters here these things up here are bleeders yes that's where you chase the air out okay so the fuel pump is down here sort of thing so you got to try and get everything flowing through whatever there's a somatic on how it works 
But the way you look at it, the odds of you getting fuel to bleed out of there to chase the air out of these containers is next to zero. Unless you're rich and famous and have the fuel tank full. But the cat never runs out of fuel or have to change the filters when the tank is full. All right. So back here. All right. Let's see if we can walk and talk. All right. Also, too, all my cats have the splash guards here. Okay, we copy that off the Caterpillar cats because this keeps the fuel from going onto your clothes, okay? So we put these on. This is the trademark, and it's good for tying the steering clutches back because the hook hooks in here, all right? So over here, you need your inner tube, okay? All right, so you pressurize the tank. You take the cap off, and you get this to fit on. Getting this inner tube with the hose clamp, and it's best to use one of your screw guns or screw drills or whatever to tighten up this here, okay? Because you're using two hands to push, or one hand to push it down. Putting this rubber uh, valve stem thingy bob on the fuel tank here, that's like trying to put a collar on a pussycat. Yeah, that's just like next to impossible. All right, so now everybody's going to say, oh, okay, so now we start with this disclaimer. If you put this on here and tighten that hose clamp down that you're holding the rubber on, and if you put enough air in this tank to blow the tank up, well, you're not very smart, okay? 12 pounds of air will kill you, all right? It's a known record. Google it, all right? So all you need to do is put this down, take your air hose and put it on here, and you puff it, okay? You just want this thing to puff up. You know, just like Kramer's uh, shirt and Seinfeld there, that puffy shirt. You want this to puff up. You don't want it, you know, trying to take off or shoot off the tank and into the roof. You just want it puffy, just like Kramer's shirt. Then you can come over here. Now that you have air in the tank, okay, you're having a pressure down. So you're going to force the air up these filters and out these bleeder screws here. The IH cats have been very lucky that I've had not to run the electric fuel pump, those Carter diesel electric fuel pumps. These little pumps down here, okay, they work. The little filter or the seal leaks and puts the diesel fuel into the injection pump and it's a sealed unit so you drain it out. But these cats are only used in the winter, so they said all summer there's going to be diesel fuel in there. IH makes a very nice little pump there. There's no dramas, no problems. We have not had to put the electric fuel pump in the system. Okay, now the next thing here is these fuel lines, okay? These fuel lines back in, you gotta remember this cat's what, 1940, so this is 70, almost 80 years old. That was the technology had back then, was these furrow, burrow, whatever fittings. These things on a steel line are next to impossible in the cold weather to get screwed back into the fittings without cross-threading them. But over the years, I've been lucky enough, and especially with bad business here, he started, he's run since the day we put him back together, okay? So we haven't had any issues or dramas, not like the twins out there with all the starter problems, fuel problems, everything. That, those things there are just unreal. So we've had good luck, and we can find enough pieces off the parts cats in an inventory to keep the fuel system going. Plus... He still has, bad business, still has the water separator there. That's the first thing we remove, okay? Because sticks come out and break the glass here or this thing leaks. So once this thing starts leaking or gives us drama, it's gone. It's bypassed. So we just, you know, that's, we can't have that at the end of the world. So everybody's going to laugh and say, what the hell did you do to your fuel system? Fuel lines, they're supposed to go down in this little hole here, all right? So then you have the brake pedal and the clutch rod right here. So they rub against it and you fight with it and then they're done. So I forget what it was. I was probably drinking heavily and I got mad or we needed the cat and I just put the fuel lines on the side. But this cat is playing in snow all the time. So it's not in the great wilderness. Okay. So here we are. All right. I'm going to squat down. Oh, you hear my knees creak. All right. So all the cats here, IH is known for the factory rubber lines to collapse. All right. I had that on the famous or the red crane cat, couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting fuel. The little black rubber hose after 60, 70 years collapses. But if you take your hacksaw to the brass covering here, you can get it off. And then I think it's 7 16 hose or half inch hose, fuel line rated, fits on here. So there's your inline filter. 
we marked the date when we changed them and stuff so this thing had a fuel full fuel service okay so this is the return line here that's the fuel in so we're cleaning the fuel some of the cats have the original uh ball or top valve there with the i would say after that packing that leaks and everything like that but we've been lucky with bad business here we put them together we've sunk them a few times and he keeps on running all right let's go out and look at uh one of the twins okay we're outside here and here's kijiji so here's the fuel lines all into place that looks a lot better because we're doing it properly all right but also too we've changed out from using the steel lines and stuff like that we tried hydraulic lines because we had lots of them back in the day because of scrap metal and stuff like that so what we've done with kijiji here is we're running that nylon air hose lines from the semi trucks yes because it works out pretty good and the fuel filter water separator has been bypassed because we don't need it all right so this works out pretty good and also too these drains have been removed and put plugs in because we're changing out starters so many times that gives you more room and it's not cutting your fingers or anything like that but this gives you an idea how we have to change everything adapt and overcome at the end of the world oh wait that's a clint eastwood movie okay i'm under the fuel tank of laverne he's the diesel cat that got the gas motor so there's the ball valve we like that little quarter inch ball valve plus you make sure you have a threaded thingy sticking up inside the tank because you don't want the bottom of the fuel tank coming through so we have the inline filter we prefer the clear one but i think we had that in stock so we shoved it on but we like the clear ones and it's a wix filter again too so you can see what is going on with the gas system okay here's the gas system for the diesel cats yes they start on gas switch to diesel so the odds of finding a vented cap are like very slim okay all right also too we love our never sees on everything this is a non-vented cap all right so when you go to start it you crack it open so it's breathing we put two stroke oil in with the gas and down here is everything switched over to be simple like there was a glass ball or bowl ball bowl yeah and stuff like that so we go to the ball valve just simple turn it on turn it off so turn it on open the cap we're ready to start also too for safety make sure you're always going this way not that way because your fingers can slip and fall into the fan especially if you're drunk when you're trying to start the cat all right so over here we keep the fuel system simple we always keep the fuel turned off okay with the lever systems for turning on and off the diesel and the gas or whatever it's supposed to lock this filter the float the float that never floats or whatever they say all right but we trust it like an ex-wife so we always make sure the gas is shut off you always want to see your fuel your gasoline in here and then with the two stroke it's also darker and then if things jam up make sure your drain works so you can drain the fuel through because sometimes the little float in there doesn't float so it needs some love or a little hit to get going so that's the fuel system on the ih diesel cats monday morning in whoville and as you can see it is snowing it's actually snowed a fair bit my steps are covered again look at that i'm not sure what we'll be doing in the kingdom today or if we're still going to do the chimney or not because this is a lot of snow coming down now it's time to head inside let the dogs out and make breakfast nine a.m. and it's been snowing for a while so i'm going to wipe off my railing here and next time i come out to do a video we'll see how much it's snowed since 10 30 and it stopped snowing for the moment but i'm sure it'll start back up again my dad canceled the chimney today since there's too much snow and he's going to work on the cats i'm going to make some dog treats later on today as well and do some laundry and then i'll head over to the kingdom after lunch this is how much snow has come down since I wiped it off last time. Let's give it a little wipe again and we'll see how much is there next time. Lunch time and I just finished making treats for the dogs in the kingdom. This will last him a week, hopefully, depending on how many he feeds them. Now it's time to make lunch and get the skidoo out and head on over to the kingdom. 
almost one o'clock and I'm just getting ready to head to the kingdom. Already got the skidoo out and warmed up. I also have my dad's laundry from yesterday and there's his dog treats there as well, plus his supper. He's gonna have chicken nuggets tonight, so hopefully he likes those because they're actually pretty good. Now it's time to head on over to the kingdom and see what he's up to. Just after one o'clock, I made it to the kingdom. We're not doing anything today. Just gonna fill up the wheelbarrow and the wagon here for my dad. That way he has wood in the shop. Then I'll go back into Whoville and do the weather and a couple other things. Now let's see how long this will take me. Had to pull the mini out and do some fluffing. I was getting into the small stuff, which isn't good. I want a mixture of it with the big stuff and small stuff. So let's see how long this will last. Might have to fluff it every single day, but that's okay. And while I was inside, my dad brought me the other wheelbarrow. So now I have more to fill. Two o'clock and I'm just finishing up in the kingdom. I already put the wheelbarrows by the shop. My dad asked me to come down and do a little video on the snow for you guys. Yesterday we did a big tandem pull up the hill here and this was all sugar snow. Now it's ferned up really nicely and my dad can walk the dogs down here. No problem. As you can already see, he was down here. When we did that tandem pull yesterday, this was all sugar snow in here. You could not walk or really stand on it. There might not be much snow at the moment, but it's still pretty sugary and it's hard to walk in. But you can see the difference here in the snow textures. Even over here where the tripod was set up, you can kind of see the square outline. That's all nice and hard to pack too. Now it's time to head on into Whoville and do the weather. Made it back to the kingdom. I'm not going to do mail today since it snowed and stuff. I'm sure the roads are going to be slippery. The mail truck might not even make it in from the south today. You never know. But I'll find out tomorrow when I go up after lunch. Now it's time to put the skidoo away and let the dogs out. And I'm going to wait a bit to do weather. Just after 4 p.m. and this is the weather we're sitting at today. It's negative 8 degrees Celsius, which is 17 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. It wasn't too bad today. It was actually kind of warm out, but the wind is picking up now. We got some clouds rolling in. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, edit my videos, and end my day. Okay, after coffee in the kingdom and I spent the rest of the morning after the making the videos on the fuel system okay so we put together a starter here this one was locked up this is one of those thousand dollar wilson's it was locked up because one of the bolts came out yes one of the bolts down in here came out and jammed so it wouldn't turn okay so what i basically did was tap it out to a bigger holes and put a little tack weld on the bigger bolts and stuff like that so these are three eighths fine we've gone to seven sixteenths fine because you got to remember these starters built by Delco 70, almost 80 years ago, they're designed for taking six volts of power. Okay. Now we're thumping it with 12 volts and we're doing it in the cold because these things are made for being down where it's warm. So something is going to break after 70 years. So that's what we did. So we got it together, just a little uh, tap, uh, tap it out, put a bigger bolt in and then put a little tack weld so it doesn't come loose. So hopefully this one will work. So we even welded on there, or marked on there. It was uh, locked, we stroked it out, we welded the Bendix. So then when we go to take it off, we kind of know what happened, that my welds failed, failed, because I didn't drink enough vodka when I welded it. Okay, on this Wilson starter here, that was rebuilt in Mexico, but we find that the people in Mexico don't understand or right, have the proper manuals to know where the shims and everything go. So we've had this thing apart so many freaking times because this Bendix jams up. Okay, so it would be stuck back here. And then as soon as you pry on it, it would come out, okay? So they also have this felt. They have felt, and they stick felts and washers and springs where they're not supposed to be. So what I did was take an original one and look at the bevels or the grooves there, okay? They come to a stop. These ones were machined to be tapered up. So as the little teeth come around, it would jam up. It would just ride up till it jams up. So I took the welder. Oh yes, we have to do the product endorsement here. Yeah, I get nothing for it. I like. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Them peanuts were good. Okay, we bought the Princess Auto Hobart Handler 100. Yes. Okay, this thing is uh, gasless, and I'm very impressed. I did some welds today on it, both starters, and I did the welds in here. We hit it hard with the uh, the heat cranked up. And it worked out good. And then I took the die grinder right here with a funny bit on the end and made it work. Yes, we made it work. Okay, so that tells you the quality of the product. So we finally figured it out. We can go like that, whack it with a hammer. Oh, hand and eye coordination. Whack it with a hammer 
and it still comes free. So we're good to go now. We'll put this together, mark on it as junk, and well, try it one more time. Okay, just about six o'clock, and I got this starter back together. That's one of those thousand dollar Ben uh, Wilson starters. Okay, the problem I had was the Bendix is junk. There's no quality in it. I seen it when they machined the grooves for the return. This is original. Okay, this is tight on here. Okay, it's tight. There's a keyway right here that gives it the power. The bolt goes through here with an extension on it. Okay, that's to keep the bendix and collars from going forward or backwards this one in here is so loose like it just jiggles and wiggles so it's just going to blow apart like there's no quality in it like they must have machined everything three times bigger all right so i just put it together made a note poor quality we'll put it on one of the twins because it's easy to pop the starter on and off like basically we take the battery out we take the seat off so we might as well be putting a starter on to start it for the day and then when we're done take the starter off and the seat and the battery okay so that tells you how poor quality it is these bolts they used are 100 percent junk so i put in some good uh, american caterpillar bolts I ground it down to make the little slot fit in there. So it's just crap the quality today. So I share I'm glad that I didn't order a bunch of how would you say new Bendix is made in a foreign country so I can put them on and, and blow them up. So I can work with 70 year old, 80 year old American quality and keep it going one more time. Okay, there's a slight bleep breeze, so I'll keep it to my back so the Lily Tomlin mic doesn't cut it. Okay. All right, so we had a good day today. We did the loose ends. This is an educational video. Yes, how to drink beer after work. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, and make a video. Talk to you later.